Now that we've discussed how to analyze forces using tools such as system schema, FBDs, and net force equations, it's time to start talking about how do we find the individual forces to analyze. How do we look at them specifically, how do we calculate them, etc. And the first one of these we're going to think about is probably the most prevalent force we're going to utilize in this class, which is the gravitational force. So consider a situation where someone has thrown a baseball through the air. Now when the baseball is in the air, it's no longer being affected by the thrower, and we're going to ignore air resistance. So the only force acting on the baseball in this particular situation would be the force of gravity. So if we were going to draw a system schema, we would have the ball and the earth and the force of gravity in between them. And if we were going to draw an FBD, we would say here's the object of the baseball, and the only force is the force of gravity going down. Now, keeping that in mind, if I was to write a net force equation for this, there's no forces in the horizontal direction, but in the vertical direction, we would say, okay, the sum of the forces and the y, the vertical dimension, is equal to the mass times the acceleration in this y dimension. But in this particular situation, the sum of the forces is only one force, which is the force of gravity. And then we would have the mass, and well, what is this vertical acceleration? Well, we've already talked about that. That is the acceleration due to gravity cheap. And in fact, this is how we calculate the gravitational force for any object. Fg is equal to m times g, where f is the gravitational force in newtons, m is the inertial mass in kilograms, and g is the acceleration due to gravity, which if we are on Earth should be approximately 10 meters per second squared. Now the thing is, we utilize this force a lot in our daily life because this is actually the force known as the weight of an object. So when we talk about your weight, what we're talking about is the force of gravity that the Earth is pulling down on you with. Now additionally, remember that when we're on Earth or really any planet, it's always going to point downward toward the center of that planet. So real quick example, keeping in mind that none of the pictures I'm about to draw are to scale, let's say we had a person on the Earth, and this person has a mass, which is about average for a human, which is approximately 60 kilograms. So we were to find their force of gravity on the surface of the Earth, it would be 60 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, which gives us 600 newtons, 600 newtons pointed down. Now if the same person was to relocate to the moon, well, their mass is not going to change, but the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is less than it is here on Earth. On Earth, it's about 10 meters per second squared. On the moon, it's approximately 1.6 meters per second squared. So if we did their mass times the acceleration due to gravity on the moon, so 60 times 1.6, we would say that their gravitational force, their weight on the moon would be 96 newtons, which is why, for instance, if we've seen any images of astronauts, they seem to be like bounding on the moon because their body is built for Earth, so they have a lot of strength, but they are not having as much weight counteracting the force of their legs on the moon, so they can accelerate themselves much more easily. And let's say this person was actually way out, just in the middle of space, pretty far away from any planets or stars or moons or anything of that nature. Now I want to be careful, we'll learn more about how gravity affects things at a distance later on in the next unit, but for right now we can pretty much just realize that the acceleration due to gravity really far away from any object is going to be approximately zero, so this person's gravitational force or weight would be basically zero way out here in space. They would be, in other words, weightless. Now to briefly connect this back to what we learned with regard to free fall, remember we learned that all objects fall at the same rate, specifically that all objects fall at g, the acceleration due to gravity, or 10 meters per second squared, that's how quickly they are speeding up towards the ground. But if we look, for instance, at this bowling ball and this feather, well, the bowling ball has a lot more weight, or gravitational force, than the feather does. So how are they falling at this same rate? Well, keep in mind that according to Newton's second law, the acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass, specifically the net force and the inertial mass. In this particular situation, the acceleration is g, so that means for both objects, well, they're going to have different gravitational forces acting on them, but they also have different masses acting on them. And in fact, this tells us that g is essentially the ratio of the weight to the mass of a particular object. So the bowling ball has a lot of weight, but it also has a lot of mass. So it has a lot of gravity pulling it down, but it also has a lot of resistance to that acceleration. The feather has a lot less gravity pulling it down, but it also has a lot less resistance to the acceleration because of its smaller 
mass. So therefore, it's going to be constant for all objects in the same point in space. Now, we briefly alluded to this a minute ago, but let's make sure we really keep separate the concept of mass and the concept of weight. So mass, which we abbreviate with a little m, the unit being in kilograms. Remember, the inertial mass is the resistance to acceleration. The gravitational mass is what causes objects to exert gravitational forces on each other. And a lot of times we just think about mass as the amount of stuff or matter in a particular object. So if we want to change the mass of an object, well, really, the only way we can do that is we need to either add or remove mass from that object. We either need to add more onto it or we need to take some away. However, if we're looking at weight, which remembers the gravitational force Fg with the units of newtons, we know the equation now is Fg equals mg, and how do we go about changing the weight of an object? Well, one, yeah, we can change the mass, meaning if we remove or add mass, that's going to have an effect on the weight. But additionally, we can also just change the object's location to a location that has a different value for g, the acceleration due to gravity. And this brings us to the final topic we want to discuss here in this video, which is that known as apparent weight. So apparent weight is the amount, really, its true definition, is the amount of normal force supporting your actual weight. So if I have a person here standing on some surface, gravity is pulling them down, the normal force is pushing back up on them, the apparent weight will be found by analyzing that normal force. Okay, now why exactly do we care about that? Well, first off, apparent weight is really what we're gonna actually be measuring most of the time. So for instance, this person here, well, if they were standing on a bathroom scale, for instance, how would that be functioning? Well, gravity would be pulling them down onto the bathroom scale, but the scale isn't really measuring that. What it's measuring is how much it has to push back up to keep this person in position. So the bathroom scale is actually measuring the apparent weight of the person, that normal force, rather than the actual gravitational force or just weight. Additionally, this is the weight that you feel, we're going to get back to that in a second, because if you have a higher apparent weight, you're going to feel heavy. You're going to feel pulled more toward the ground. And if you have a lower apparent weight, you're going to feel lighter. You're going to feel like you're almost floating on the ground. And this is largely a result of your inertia, your mass, the resistance to that acceleration. So let's go through some examples. Let's say that, for instance, you're at Six Flags, and you're on the, I believe it's still called the Superman Tower of Power. So just to know what that is, that's a ride where they strap you into a seat, and then they basically zoom you up, and then they drop you, essentially. And it's all about basically feeling that sensation of being zoomed up and then dropped. So first off, let's say you get strapped in the seat, and you're just sitting there. So you're at rest, and your acceleration is therefore equal to zero, just sitting there in the seat. Well, that's the case. This is a pretty simplistic situation. We're going to have a normal force going up, a gravitational force or weight going down, and the net force will therefore be zero. And so therefore, these two forces will be balanced, meaning that the apparent weight, the normal force, will be equal to the actual weight, the gravitational force, in this particular scenario. You are going to feel perfectly normal. But the thing is, though, let's say they turn the ride on and it zooms you up to the top of this ride. Well, you're going to feel an acceleration going up. And what is that going to make you feel? Well, you're going to feel pushed down into the seat, almost like the Earth is pulling you down more. Now, that's not really what's happening. What's happening is that your inertia is in place as the seat is pushing you up. But it's going to feel like you are really, really heavy. You can barely pull yourself off the seat. And why is that happening? Well, that's happening because if we look at the net forces here, so we've got normal force going up and the gravitational force going down, and the only way we can have a net force going up and therefore an acceleration up is that the normal force must be greater than the gravitational force, aka the seat is pushing you up more than the Earth is pulling you down. So let's say if we want to solve for this apparent weight, this normal force, how would we go about doing that? Well, we could set up our net force equation that the sum of the forces is equal to ma, the mass times acceleration. This is all in the vertical direction. So we could say the normal force plus the gravitational force is equal to ma. So if we solve for the normal force, that would be ma minus fg. But let's keep the signs of all these pieces in focus. So if we look here, we have 
uh, positive going up and negative going down. And so therefore, the normal force is going to be a positive value. Mass times the acceleration will be a positive value because it's also pointed up. And the gravitational force will be a negative value. And what is a positive minus a negative? Well, it's going to be an even bigger positive number. And so what we're going to get from this is that the normal force will be a greater value than the gravitational force, and therefore the apparent weight would be a greater value than the gravitational force. You are going to feel heavier. If a scale was measuring you, it would measure that you have a greater weight, even though that's not your real weight, that's just the apparent weight. Now let's talk about the opposite. Let's say you get to the top of the ride, and then you get dropped. And when you get dropped, you're going to start accelerating downward. Now, if you're accelerating downward, let's talk about the forces again. Now, keep in mind, that does not mean your gravitational force gets bigger. Your gravitational force can't change as long as we're near the surface of the Earth, because your mass and g are the same thing. What is going to happen is that the normal force has to be less. It's basically the seat is dropping out from underneath you. Your body's resistance to the acceleration downward, it wants to stay in place. It's kind of going to feel like it's almost hovering or floating for a second before it continues on downward. And so if we were to look at the sum of the forces equals ma, the mass times the acceleration, let's once again go through this. Well, we're going to say, okay, same thing here, fn plus fg equals ma, and we're going to move fg over to the other side. But now we have a little bit of difference here, because fn is still positive. Mass times the acceleration is negative, but smaller, because the net force is the difference between the two. And fg is negative. And if we have a small negative number minus a bigger negative number, well, in this particular situation, it's going to result in a positive value, but it's going to be much smaller than it was in this previous example. So we should be getting a normal force that is much smaller than the gravitational force. And that means that the normal force, that apparent weight, you're going to feel light. You're going to feel like you're almost floating. So keep it in mind then, we already talked about what our apparent weight is, but how can we change it? Well, one, just like with mass, we can change the mass. We can add or remove mass from the object. Two, just like weight, we can change location to a location with a different acceleration due to gravity. But now, the other thing that changes things is if we are accelerating vertically. If we're accelerating up or down, that's going to change our apparent weight, our perception of how heavy we feel, even though our mass and our actual weight have not changed at all. All right, so that concludes our video on the gravitational force, and what are the main takeaways? Well, can we calculate the gravitational force on an object by multiplying its mass times its acceleration due to gravity, g? Can we identify and describe the differences in mass, weight, and apparent weight, and additionally being able to describe how can we change each of these? And lastly, can we calculate the apparent weight of an object that may or may not be accelerating in the vertical direction. For instance, um, can we talk about you know, how big that normal force is relative to gravity? If it's at rest, if it's accelerating upward, or if it's accelerating downward. Can we figure out what that weight would be if we knew, for instance, the acceleration, the mass, the actual weight, the gravitational force, etc.